Well, let me just say, 13 years is a long time. Uh, my line is that when I started, I had a full head of hair and none of it was gray, and I've pulled it all out in the intervening period. I can't tell you how grateful I am to uh, John Andrews, Senator Andrews, uh, Senator Bill Armstrong, to uh, Don Sweeting, and of course to Jeff Hunt for allowing this unbroken record to continue. I'm so proud to be here. It is really the highlight of my year. Um, in the course of those 13 appearances, I've talked with you all about a lot of challenges that have been on my mind. Um, I kind of think of it as therapy, if you don't mind. It's, it's cheaper for me, frankly, but it's uh, hopefully helpful to you to learn about these uh, various, well, challenges, yes, threats indeed, to our country. And they've included things like Sharia supremacism uh, and the jihad that it commands its adherents to follow. It uh, has included Russian revanchism and threats to our electric grid. It's uh, also involved, among other things, the enemy within our own country of various kinds. I'm here today to talk to you about the most serious, the most comprehensive, and the most dangerous threat our nation has ever faced, bar none. Are there any Star Trek fans in the audience? Okay, some of you may then be familiar with uh, one of the most dangerous of the enemies that uh, the good guys faced in Star Trek, the Borg, the collective, the hive. It's an apt way of thinking about the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, that is very much a collective, a hive, omnipresent, aggressive, and intent on global domination. What we are confronting is a threefold task today, and I'll try to be very brief. One, I want to tell you about what the Chinese Communist Party is doing. I want to talk to you about what we're doing. And I want to talk to you, most importantly, about what we need to be doing. So first, the Chinese Communists, what are they up to? Well, unbeknownst to the vast majority of Americans, they have been at war with this country for at least 20 years. They call it a, an unrestricted war, uh, a war that has not yet gone kinetic, as they say, but it has involved all manner of other techniques for trying to accomplish their immediate and surpassingly important purpose, which is eliminating the one real impediment to the realization of their global ambitions, namely us. What they have done includes economic warfare, the hollowing out of our industrial base and much of our economy. I just saw yesterday here the premiere of an absolutely first class film that Jenny Beth Martin, my friend and colleague who founded the Tea Party Patriots has put together about innovation warfare, an element of the economic warfare the Chinese have engaged in. It is fabulous, I commend it to you in the most urgent terms. It talks about how this is working, and it is working, unfortunately. Supply chain dominance. We've been hearing a lot about supply chains. All of the important ones, frankly, emanate from China or are under their control. Hoarding of food. You're beginning to hear a lot about food insecurity, food shortages, even starvation around the world. I personally believe the Chinese have not only anticipated this, but have contributed to it, notably by encouraging their ally, Vladimir Putin, if he needed any encouragement, to invade Ukraine, one of the great breadbaskets of the world. It will afflict us here too, folks, for reasons I'll touch on in a moment. Not least, the Chinese Communist Party has, since May of 2019, engaged in what their chief propaganda outlet, People's Daily, described as people's war against the United States. In the intelligence business, this is what is called a clue. They're serious about it, folks, and they are hard at it. Now, you wouldn't know any of this, of course, from Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, he just gave a major address on China, and it was all about cooperation and competition. Engagement, in other words, of the kind that has brought us to the present pass. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how that has happened as a function of one of the other main lines of attack of the Chinese Communist Party, namely 
it's elite capture, or as Jack Prasobia calls it, elite merger. And whether it's our academics, whether it's our uh, Hollywood cultural elite, whether it's uh, the US health bureaucracy and research institutions, whether it's politicians, notably the Biden family, and of course its team, Congress, governors, and others who have basically bought into this idea that if we just try to help uh, China become richer, it will behave better and become more like us, and all will be well. Folks, as you know, but still too few of them acknowledge, it isn't working out that way. Engagement has instead enriched, empowered, emboldened, and enabled the Chinese Communist Party to take the next step which I'm going to talk to you more about in a moment. So what are we doing about all this? Well, frankly, we're, as I say, bringing the Chinese Communist Party to the point where I think they recognize that now they can actually take that next step to kinetic warfare. A man who has perhaps single-handedly done more than any other who is in a sense, the personification of elite capture. It's a fellow you may have heard of. His name is Larry Fink. He is the CEO of a titanic financial institution on Wall Street that sort of epitomizes, again, what the business sector has done in this regard. Larry Fink has been known recently for his championing of something called Environment, Social, and Governance Agenda, ESG. Notwithstanding his purported commitment to environment and social justice and governance, he's also committed to China. He's actually said that US investors should treble the amount of money they put in China as investors. And he's been all about facilitating that. As a result of Larry Fink's efforts, among others, we have transferred approximately three, maybe as much as six trillion dollars to the Chinese Communist Party over the past decade or so. Partly, thanks, interestingly enough, to a memorandum of understanding that was negotiated by a guy by the name of Joe Biden when he was Vice President of the United States, that not only gave the Chinese Communist Party access to our capital markets, it gave it to them on preferential terms. They don't have to conform to our audit and accounting standards. BlackRock has, in addition, been buying up large swaths of American homes. As you may have heard, they are controlling interest in a couple of key companies like CF Industries Holdings, um, Union, Union Pacific Railroad, outfits that are going to be contributing, I think, to food crises and transportation problems of various kinds. This is an unbelievable problem because it's being done, folks, mostly with your money. If you are an investor in Wall Street, chances are, whether you know it or not, your money is in mutual funds or index funds or 401k plans or other pension funds that have a portion of their portfolios, at least, in Chinese communist com companies, some of them Companies that have been sanctioned by our government because they've been involved in supporting the efforts of the People's Liberation Army to prepare to destroy us. You, you, you can't do business with them, but you can own their stocks and enable their activities. Does something seem wrong with that picture? Or maybe it's human rights abuses, or maybe it's the surveillance state apparatus that they not only use to control their own people, the Chinese Communist Party, but that they are now exporting, including to places like this, in the form of vaccine passports and, uh, oh, I don't know, personal carbon footprint trackers. That just was brooded at Davos last week. The thing that is very alarming to me, I must tell you, as a national security professional with a lot of gray hair, is I think we are at the cusp of that kinetic war going live with China. And you're going to hear a lot about it in context of Taiwan. I think the Chinese are making it absolutely clear if we're paying attention, we're in their crosshairs too. Maybe it's just our carrier task forces, 
or our forward operating bases in the Pacific. Maybe it's another Pearl Harbor or maybe it's worse here in the United States. But whatever it is, folks, this is no time for anybody, not you and not Larry Fink's current obsession, not our military personnel, past and present, our civilian government employees, past and present. Their money he wants to put into China too, folks at a moment when we, we might well find ourselves having them killing us. Does anybody really think you're going to get your money back at that point? Are you willing to lose it? Write it off? In time of war, no less? I think you probably aren't. But this, the thing that is most infuriating about all of this, I have to say, is thanks to Larry Fink, you probably aren't going to find it very easy to figure out whether you have money in China. In fact, the Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board, as it's called, that runs something called the Thrift Savings Plan for the federal government, won't tell those federal employees whether mutual funds that they're endorsing, that they're making available to them, actually have money in Chinese companies. Can you imagine? So the upshot of this would be personnel serving our country in uniform, putting their lives on the line to defend us, could well find themselves with their money helping to purchase the weapons with which they will be killed by the Chinese Communist People's Liberation Army. I find that unspeakable. I hope you do too. So the question then comes down to, if all of this is in play, what do we do about it? What we're doing about it now is, is making it worse. So I've got four steps that I would propose you take aboard. The first is the most painfully obvious. This thrift savings plan, which is just in the process of beginning to try to get their hands on $800 billion in the federal savings plan, mustn't be allowed to put that money in China. It just mustn't. So I want you to do one thing. If you do nothing else after all of this, go to no tsp for ccp.org. No thrift savings plan for Chinese Communist Party.org. No tsp for ccp.org. There's an Align Act campaign there that will, with a click of a mouse, enable you to send to your elected representatives and the members of this Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board a very strong and very appropriate, we're not going to do this. Which, by the way, is what Donald Trump said when Larry Fink and his friends tried to do this two years ago. We need to say no. And by the way, if you don't happen to be a federal employee, if you don't happen to have money in the retirement fund of the federal government, you, again, probably still have money, whether you know it or not, in China. You've got to get it out of there now. If you can't find a financial manager or pension fund manager who's going to help you figure that out and get it out of there, I want you to go to nsic.org. That is the website for my friend Kevin Freeman's new training program called National Security Investment Consultants Institute. It's training financial advisors how to invest your money patriotically instead of our enemy. Check it out, nsic.org. Third, we need to get on a war footing, folks. The Chinese have done it. They're coming for us. It's now being made abundantly clear. We cannot continue to pretend it's not a problem. It is a problem of the first order for all of us, and we need people who are willing to do this. I wrote a book about it in 2015. I commend it to you. War footing is needed now. And finally, and this may strike you as outrageous, but it's going to have to be done, I think, if, God forbid, what I'm predicting is going to happen. We're going to need something like a national unity government, folks not made up of the kind of clowns we've got now, but of people who love this country, who are committed to its defense, who practice and believe in the principle of peace 
through strength, and who have taken and will fulfill the oath of office to protect and defend our Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. God bless you.